Hello everyone. Welcome back to Acres of Clay. The first cutting hay is done. Corn is planted. And the guys are back working on the barn. Setting some poles. So this is where they're at right now. They want to finish this section right here, put steel on it, and work their way this way. Eventually we will we'll extend it. The barn, I don't know exactly how many feet out, but for now they just wanna keep working, working their way. It's kinda of hot out, but they're working. A lot of you ask why such a high roof, and there's several factors to the reason we put it so high. Main reason is ventilation. Um, cattle need ventilation is very important for them to stay healthy um, second reason is for equipment to get in and out especially that thing um, for cleaning um, so that just makes it easier as well this is where we feed so the tractor and the mixer wagon they need to be able to fit they need to be able to fit under this roof so that's my explanation not the shortest pole Poles are heavy. So what'd you get done today? Part of the rough raise. Well, it looks like it's gonna rain here shortly. Yeah. Out. I hear some thunder. And then uh, tomorrow we're working on finishing the front off. And uh, yeah, then. That looks good. Keep working at it. I feel a lot of rain now. You feel some rain? I see it too. Today I'm going to be making meatloaf. Some of you have asked for my meatloaf recipe, which really isn't anything special. Super easy. I don't really even have a recipe that I follow but I will show you the basics of how I make it. So my meatloaf is always just hamburger. Some people put sausage in theirs or mix, mix up the meats, maybe venison, but I only use um, ground beef. And today I'm using two pounds of ground beef. Each of these is one pound, so I'm using two um, you can easily cut this recipe in half if two pounds is way too much for your family. But for us, two pounds is just probably a perfect amount. First of all, I have to say that my kitchen, to make videos in my kitchen is really hard because my kitchen's not designed to, um, to make you see very well. It's very hard because of the way I have the island set up. So I'm gonna try my best so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, so in my bowl, I have two pounds of ground beef. This is fairly lean. You don't wanna use a very fatty meat. I would say anywhere between 85 and 90, 95% lean is great. Anything more fattier than that, it will work, but you're just gonna have a lot more grease since you're not pre-browning this and draining the grease off of it. So to this, um, I'm going to be adding two eggs. So to the eggs and the meat, I'm going to add seasonings. I have garlic, I have garlic powder, and I'm not measuring, but I would say maybe for, for us, we're not big garlic eaters, but maybe a quarter of a teaspoon, not a lot. What I would normally put in meatloaf is chop up maybe a half an onion, maybe even a whole onion if it's small, and put that in. But Mackenzie doesn't like onions. She's gonna be eating with us tonight and I want her to be able to eat this without having to pick out all the onions. Um, so I'm gonna put in onion powder. She doesn't mind onion powder, she just doesn't like onions. So I'm gonna say, you know, if you're gonna do onion powder, Probably a, a half teaspoon to a teaspoon of that. Um, add black pepper. Again, don't get carried away, but I don't know, half teaspoon. For salt, you probably are gonna want a teaspoon. 
I have pink Himalayan salt that I'm just um, grinding. Okay, then you can be creative in whatever you want to add, what other spices that you like. Um, I'm going to add just a little paprika and I'm just doing a pinch of that. I'm going to throw in some diced dehydrated red bell peppers. Uh, I think they just go well. You don't have to add this. This is completely up to you guys. So that's basically the spices that I add. Okay, so to this mixture I'm going to be adding oatmeal. Now a lot of people um, use breadcrumbs which is perfectly fine. Uh, but I've always used oatmeal, and this is the quick oatmeal, quick oats. And I'm probably going to put in maybe a cup. I usually don't measure. <laughs> so that looks about right. Cup, maybe three-fourths of a cup, and then add some milk to this. Um, I don't know how much milk either. I would say at least a half cup, maybe closer to a cup. Now, to, at this point... You're going to get your hands dirty and you're going to work the meat to incorporate all the ingredients. So you have to get, you have to get your hands dirty otherwise this isn't going to mix as well. This is just an easy way to mix it all. So you got to get your egg in there and you got to get your oatmeal in there. You're not going to want to overwork this because if you do overwork it then you're going to end up with more of a dense meatloaf so just incorporate it until it's all mixed together and you can kind of feel if you have enough um, moisture I don't have a clue how to describe that but um, as far as oatmeal and milk goes um, it feels feels just about right now to this I'm going to put this in loaf pans and I'm probably gonna make two loaf pans. I have a stone um, loaf pan that I'm going to put the meat into. Here's the first one. Alright so this is what it looks like. I have two of these and now I'm gonna make a sauce to go on the top. A lot of the times you can use just ketchup if you like ketchup or barbecue sauce but I'm gonna make my own and I'll show you how I do this. Okay, to make the sauce that goes on the top, I'm gonna to start with about three fourths to a cup of ketchup. And I'm gonna to add to this um, a splash of white vinegar, maybe like a teaspoon, I would say. Okay, after the vinegar, I'm gonna add some brown sugar. It doesn't take very much, maybe a couple teaspoons. Again, we're gonna add onion powder. I don't know, half a teaspoon of that. Same with the garlic powder. Just a little bit of salt, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. And same with black pepper, not very much. Mix it up real good. And we're just gonna spread it on top of our meat loaves. So we just place it right on top. So here it is. This is the final product before we put it in the oven. You're going to want to put this in a 350 degree oven for about an hour to an hour and a half. I like my topping to get real caramelized. Um, yeah, and I'm going to be serving this with baked potatoes and asparagus for supper or green beans. So this is the meatloaf. I took it out of the oven and then let it set for a little bit. Scooped it out of the loaf pan, put it on a platter, cut it up, and voila! So hopefully you give this meatloaf recipe a try. If you do, let me know in the comments below how you and your family like it. Or if you have a different recipe that you like to use, um, yeah, let me know what you do differently. Well, we just had a really nice shower. We got about three tenths of rain. It came down nice and gently. So I'm going to do a quick um, garden update. Haven't shown you the garden probably a week or two. I don't remember. But I haven't shown you the main garden. Not a lot going on in the main garden. And there's only a handful of different variety of things growing. So I have tomatoes way over. Those are um, volunteer tomatoes that I had tomatoes planted there last year and they just 
grew. And then I have a couple rows of potatoes, a couple rows of peppers. This is uh, my youngest row of tomatoes, so you can't really see they're doing a whole lot yet. The asparagus has gone to seed. Um, these are two rows of peppers, different varieties, and then another row of tomatoes, a couple more rows of potatoes. This is some herbs that I've been cleaning out, chives and mint, and then three rows of beans and some flowers. So last year I put these two um, cattle panels up and I wanted them for growing the grapevines on. And you can see how they are growing right over, actually. The second one down there has got grapevines all the way down. But I do have some morning glories on this side that will grow up. Hopefully they'll meet. This is where my squash, my zucchini, summer squash are. I also have some sunflowers growing in here. These are all voluntary. I didn't plant any of them. And then I have cucumbers to grow up on this side. But as you can see, you can see there's grapes. Uh, all kinds of them. I was hoping they would hang down um, so that they'd be easy, easy to uh, pick. Now I'm thinking the birds are going to get in here. So here's the garden beds. Wow. This, uh, these are pretty tall and should be harvested, but this is the lettuce bed. Um, cucumbers are starting to grow where they're going to want to start climbing. Um, looks like maybe the wind got some of them, but I'm going to start training them to go up this trellis. Um, onions, peas. I'm just starting to harvest peas. You can see these are shell peas, but they're starting to fill out. We eat them by the handfuls, but the potato bed, that's doing pretty good. This bed has all kinds of things going on. So we've got um, yard long beans. Those are not really putting forth runners yet to climb up, but it'll be shortly they will. Onions, the peas, these peas too. Some of them are starting to produce, but some of them aren't. These ones are not yet. They have blossoms at the top, but no fruit yet. So this is green beans. Those are all potatoes in the um, containers. This bed has cucumbers. Same thing, I need to train them to go up the trellis. This is tomatoes and peppers. Um, look at this. This is a banana pepper. And then yesterday I kinked, I kinked it here. Hopefully, it doesn't look like it's dying. The top, I think it's gonna, it's gonna be okay, but I didn't wanna um, bend it back and break it. So the peppers are doing pretty good. Some of them looked a little bit yellow in color, but for the most part, everything's growing pretty good right now. Hey, there's a stranger in my garden. <laughs> Look at this, raspberries. I've been picking them, but nobody knows it yet. <laughs> in the morning, I come out, have a little breakfast while I work in the garden. So those are the raspberry bushes. These are more the tomatoes. Oh, that one needs to be tied up. Tomatoes, peppers, again tomatoes and peppers. This is a row of green beans. This is a row of three different varieties of um, cucumbers, pickling cucumbers. The next bed, this is a row of pickling cucumbers. Also, this is the variety that I always plant, so I just separated that from um, separated this one from these because I wanted to see how well these three different varieties produced. This is called broom corn. One of you, my subscribers, um, sent me and she um, sent along a picture of her when she she grew it last year and then she sent me some seeds. I didn't know how close to plant it but um, if I need to thin it I will. Um, 
but it's growing good. It really is. And then this is my melon and squash area. Here's a different angle. This is pretty much what the garden looks like, or the garden bed area. And I think I pretty much showed you everything. Um, of course, there's my onions back there. That, the rest of the onions. I have onions in a few, several different beds. But this is the first of the onions that I planted, which are getting pretty tall. And the radishes we're harvesting. They're about going to be done soon. And then that will open up this whole area because there's nothing in this weeds. <laughs> And then I can probably plant something else here. And this is Sydney's invention. It catches flies. You can see them. Maybe you can't see them, but there's there's just hundreds of them. That's something he's been working on this um, this summer. And let's see. You'll be watching this video on June 23, which is Sydney's birthday. He's gonna be 21, so you can say happy birthday to him. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Alright, I better do some calf chores before it rains again because I think there's another line coming. Oh boy, you're so hungry. Thank <laughs> you. 